good to see uh, Denny do more five on five stuff out there for a longer duration. Um, gave us an opportunity to kind of move him around, you know, handle and be a second side ball handler, but uh, change his positions. And it's kind of like a little uh, pop quiz for him because he's picking things up on the fly. He's um, not been able to do as much as we'd like, but he's in a good place right now. He's responded well, and uh, we look forward to seeing what he uh, what he can do tomorrow. Is it is tomorrow? Are you, will you be looking at just a test to see how he can make those adjustments? What he looks like running with certain guys? Like, what, what's the number one thing that you're looking at tomorrow? Uh, I think just overall how he responds after today. So we got after it a bit today, um, and then um, he he may be limited somewhat tomorrow, but um, just an opportunity for him to play in a real game. That's honestly the, the only thing we really want to see. Um, see how he's retaining. Uh, if he can, you know, take some things that we added today uh, into tomorrow's game see where he is defensively with our terminology, our concepts. I think all those things, he's a step or two behind just because he hasn't had the uh, necessary reps. And we're also talking cases maybe the first game. Do you expect him to run with the first unit and what are you looking at him yesterday? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think he'll be fine. You know, as a vet, um, he's probably been in those type of situations where you miss a game or we talked about, you know, that game the following day. He said he watched, he walked me through the whole game. So He's uh he's got a good feel as far as what we're looking to do, uh, and I think he'll he'll fit in seamlessly. The uh, pop quiz changing positions on the fly type of thing. Um, can you expand on on just that as a tactic? Uh, is it something that you do with other players, or is it specific to a guy like him? And have you kind of seen that work with others in the past? Uh, I like doing it. I mean, I think it just makes it tougher on the defense to really kind of nail down what you're looking to do. Um, gives you more flexibility when you have two or three ball handlers on the floor, uh, you're moving those guys around, you know, and it, it's, it's tough at first because there's a learning curve. It's pretty standard if a point guard is always handling the ball and guys know I'm exactly in which spot, but uh, that variability is also tough to guard. So I think it keeps defenses on their heels. And you drew a lot of praise before taking this job for your advanced scouting report. So you obviously have a history of doing that. Is that something that you focus on in the preseason? I know some, time teams kind of just work on themselves and then worry about others mm -hmm. once the regular season starts, but kind of where are you at in that thing? Well, I think right now it's still about us, um, and that'll remain so until we get into the regular season. We'll start ramping up a little bit more each preseason game, but uh, it's, it's important for our guys to understand this is how we prepare. So it might not be the same duration uh, in, in film or the same number of plays we're going to walk through as normal in a regular season uh, game, but we'll definitely – go through the exercise so, I, so they have an understanding of the pattern. These are the things we're going to cover. This is how we do it. This is how we prepare. Um, this is going to be just the basics for, you know, us moving forward. Wes, we haven't asked you in a while, but do you expect to have Drew lead off for any preseason games? Do you have any idea of the timeline when, when a guy is out for personal reasons? How did you approach, you know, keeping in touch with him mm -hmm. and conversations with him versus probably not wanting to, you know, overwhelm him? Oh, sure. Um, you know, I think the uh, – the big thing is when he does get here, you know, it'll take some time to get him up to speed, just like any other player. Um, you know, right now, we're, we're still giving, giving him the time he needs. Um, and we've been in communication, which is great. He's kept us abreast of his situation. And, um, you know, when he's ready, you know, he'll, we'll, we'll put him in the mix and see what he's got. I look forward to it because, uh, you know, once again, it's, it's another guy. You know, now you're playing 10, 11 guys deep if needed. Um, and there's not a whole lot of drop off. So it, it gives you some balanced rosters and it goes back to that flexibility um, and the competitive nature of the, of the practices and training camp where the white, the white group, second group really has been uh, the dominant group. So uh, that's kind of good to see you, that you have a, you know, a second unit that can really push compete and, you know, really get after that first group. Real quick, uh, just, and not necessarily pertaining to Rui, but just in general, how difficult is your system uh, for players trying to learn this new system? Uh, not very difficult at all. I think it's, uh, we try to streamline things. So uh, the, the verbiage is very basic. So if you can put the pieces together, if you take a second, you'll be able to, you know, kind of figure out what we're looking to do. Um, and I think, you know, when you can build upon itself, it, it's simpler. You know, I think at, at times we as coaches complicated with different terms for different actions. We're trying to really make sure all the actions have a have a name. So if you put the names together, a guy can 
can pretty much figure out where he needs to be. So it's less concepts, but more just getting used to the terminology? Yeah, for the most part. Defensively, I think that's the biggest thing is the terminology. Because uh, you may be doing the same thing with another team. We just call it something different. Uh, some of the teaching points are different. Um, some of the nuanced footwork, uh, those things may be slightly different, but I don't think it's vastly new. It's just, uh, you know, so that new player or you're, you're plugging in a new guy, is, it's going to take him some time to get comfortable with where we are, where we, where we need him to be. Mm -hmm. Neil? Hey, Coach, last year, you know, they would always talk about there were stretches where, you know, they were pretty good defensively, but you might not carry out throughout a 48-minute game. What's the hardest part about just trying to, you know, just stay on them? Okay, keep doing what you're doing, keep doing the right things, you know, for such a long period of time. There's a consistency with that. Um, I think it's you're fighting human nature. You know, sometimes it does get boring. It gets mundane. Some of the drills get, get taxing. Um, so the mindset is to not just get through it, but get something out of it. And I think that's important for our guys to, to understand that you know, every single rep, we got to make sure it, there's purpose behind that. Otherwise, you, you, we're just going through a, a mental exercise, and that's a waste of time. So, you know, when it comes to the games, you know, you'll see the defense wax and wane throughout the course of a 48-minute uh, contest, but that's, that's the game, you know. Mm -hmm. And can you fight that temptation to take possessions off? Um, I think trying to implement where, hey, we're going to do everything right every single trip. And if you make that a habit, you're not going to be hundred percent, but if it becomes second nature, I think you're going to be uh, in the right spot more often than not. Thanks coach. Quinton. How you doing coach? Wanted to ask you about the pick and roll with Spencer Dinwiddie and Daniel Gafford I, against the Houston Rockets. It was just such a beautiful sight to see, but what have you seen from that, uh, that marriage between the two and just how good can you think that partnership can be moving throughout the season? Well, I think it's going to be great. Um, you know, we, we talked about Daniel's athleticism, his ability mm -hmm. to put pressure on the rim. Uh, not only is it good for him, you know, you got a playmaker like Spencer or Brad. Obviously, they both can score, can pass, can find him late. But the, the amount of shooting behind it, and that puts defenses in a bind. You know, they got to decide, are we going to tag? Are we going to hit, stand um, Daniel up? Or are we going to play the cat and mouse game and bend, be back, you know, a little bit? Now those guards are downhill. That it, uh, it can be tough. Um, so I think that that two man relationship is going to be good for us um, with his athleticism, his ability to uh, be a vertical threat mm -hmm. uh, shooting. We can put on the floor. It's going to stretch, stretch defenders out. And also watching Corey Kispert play. A lot of people just think he's a shooter, but I feel like he's more complete of a player than people give him credit for. Can you talk about maybe something that stands out to you that most people don't see, uh, I guess, face value and also maybe talk about his playmaking as well? Mm hmm. Uh, two things, really. Um, the pace at which he plays, um, mm -hmm. I think, is great for a young player. Um, he knows how to move, cut. Um, it's an added dimension for a guy who maybe doesn't have the ball skills to play, you know, pick and roll possession after possession. That's going to be something, obviously, you know, he can build upon. But but the cutting in, in itself acts the same. Mm -hmm. um, people are going to chase him because he is a shooter. So when, when teams chase or he's cutting, you, you have to account for that cut. Right. That, that ignites tags, and all of a sudden it opens up plays for other people. He might not be the, the one that benefits from it, but he's helping us, you know, with, with the, the force he puts on the rim, but also cut, relocate to space, and now once again become a three-point threat. Thank you so much, Coach. Mm -hmm. Christos? Uh, hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking about the Denny Avdia, what did you see from him last season and what is your impression so far from him with your conversation and stuff like this? Well, I think with Denny, it's, it's one of those things from afar, you know, we, being in the West, we, we basically saw you guys twice. So it, it might not do it justice to really say, hey, I had a good look at what he's capable of. Um, obviously you see him in, throughout summer um, and into September Sadly, he wasn't able to play summer league, so another opportunity lost. So right now he's kind of playing catch up as far as where we need him to be going into the regular season. But, you know, you've seen now opportunities for him to be more than what he was maybe maybe last year. Um, by design or, or by accident, I think he's uh, he's got more layers to him. His ability to play make, um, he's obviously a shooter. And although he didn't shoot it great last season, 
Um, I think the game has slowed down for him a bit. I think all rookies go through that, where the game feels fast, um, the spacing, the timing. Uh, you don't feel as open as you really are. But uh, as the game slows down, I think um, you're able to make more reads. You feel more comfortable. Uh, the challenge, not just with him, but all our guys, is you know getting up to speed defensively. Um, it's going it's to be a challenge for him. And we're going to ask him to guard those marquee ball handlers, those playmakers at the three. At times, switch on the smaller um, attack guards. Um, at times, you got to battle, you know, uh, power forwards in the post. So it's going to be a challenge. But uh, you know, I think he's up to the up to the task, and I look forward to uh, seeing how it plays out. You're on. Thanks. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, so on the same subject of Denny, what should uh, we expect from him uh, tomorrow? Oh, he'll get an opportunity to play. Um, I think we'll be mindful of his minutes and, and, and the stretches that he runs just to uh, maybe protect him from himself <laughs> at this point because he's chomping at the bit. He wants to get after it. He wants to. He never wants to take a possession off or, or get out of a drill uh, to his credit, you know, but we also have to be mindful of where he is as far as his conditioning. And we don't want that to be a hindrance to his performance. So, yeah, we want to see, you know, push himself, uh, see, see him mixing with different groups, putting him in different uh, spots on the floor. But at the same time, we got to be mindful that, uh, you know, we have some time. And in doing that, let's, let's make those windows short, you know, get after it, play hard, uh, get him in and get him out. So uh, we'll be cautious with his minutes, but I think it's important for him to get out there against somebody, some, uh, another team and uh, really give himself uh, an opportunity to showcase his abilities. Just veneers. Oh, um, Hollywood. Yeah. I've had him, uh, well, I only had my, um, my top done when I was in LA. Uh, and this summer, I just I decided to do the bottom. Uh, <laughs> I mean, mind you, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like my teeth, you know, that I had before. It was small, you know, uh, Showed a lot of, lot of gum when I smiled. Uh, so kind of fixed that smile a little bit. Good for you. Thank you. Um, now that you're back and kind of running with the, with the guys, running with the first group from what we understand, what kind of are you looking to do in your first preseason game? You just want to get feel or you want to you know, show folks something? Um, a little bit of both. You know, get a, get a, first get a feel, you know, of, of the gameplay. You know, I uh, haven't played since, you know, last year. Uh, um. And also just go out there and give, you know, great energy. You know, uh, don't worry about mistakes. You know, and I'm going to make, uh, make mistakes. Uh, just go out, out there and play. Wes said that you kind of walked him through the first preseason game, that obviously we were watching some of the stuff. What did you see in that game that kind of stood up to you? Um, that we have, a, uh, we have a great squad. You know, uh, we didn't let up. You know, we competed through the whole game. Um, you no, know, we play for one another. Uh, it's just all about, you know, just paying attention to detail, you know, staying like locked in. Uh, it was just like I like you said, it was some time when I was watching where we go over the schemes here, uh, defensive wise, and we, we missed a whole bunch of things that we, we actually just go over and practice every day. Uh, and that was just my main takeover, you know, you know, just take out of the game, you know, just stuff we can just uh Easily fix, you know, uh, and stuff we go over every day. Respecting that Denny Obvious playing his first preseason game um, on Saturday, what would have been your early impressions of him so far? Uh, hard worker. Uh, even through the uh, start of training camp, you know, all I seen him do was just run, work, shoot. Uh, he's been working since since I've been since, since we've been since I've been here. Uh, even though he's been the last two practices, he's been playing with us. Uh, which is which has been good. He's high energy, uh, and just playing to like to his ability. And uh, we understand that uh, coach had him cover a pop quiz, kind of change position with them at scrimmage or them at drill. Um, what was that like from from your perspective? And has he been doing that with other players? Or just him? Uh, I mean, he, he gives everybody an opportunity. You know, uh, to, to get outside their position or to either run point or anything else. Um, but um, he did do that today with, uh, with Denny. And, and, you know, he made some mistakes, you know, but, you know, that's not his position. You know, that's usually not where he's, you know, where he's at. 
Uh, so, you know, it felt, probably felt a little uncomfortable for him. Uh, I would say, you know, I even feel uncomfortable sometimes when I'm at the point guard position. You know, like, what am I supposed to do? You know, <laughs> I'm a shooter. Uh, but, you know, that's, you have to, you know, mo know multiple positions in this, in this league. And I feel like he, he, can, he can get better there. Uh, we know you've known Brad for a long time. Uh, you mentioned how you had kind of seen that side of him. You made that speak. I'm, I'm also I'm just interested. Like, what, what has kind of been your general impression of him as a teammate, uh, having known him so well for so long? But now you're seeing a different side of him. Um, I know when we when we in like on the court, you know, it's all serious. You know, it's all you know about the team. You know, uh, what we need to do. He's he's been that vocal leader in practice. Um, and you know that's the most I've seen out of uh, out, out of him. You know, just just being here, you know, it's it's a it's a surprising, you know, because when we just hanging around, you know, it's 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 barely talking. You know, we either on the game or we just we talking here and there. Um, but just to hear him, you know, being vocal, you know, getting everybody involved, you know, trying to you know get the feel of everybody, you know, it's it's, it's been good. He's been a great leader so far. Hey, Casey, uh, what do you think is the key to great communication on defense? Um, I mean, just you got to talk, open your mouth, you know, mostly. <laughs> I would say just, you know, you got to, you, you know, if I'm on the ball, you know, I can't see behind me. So that person has to talk to me and let me know what's going on. Uh, and it's my job to, to, to hear that. You know, if I don't hear is then that's on me, you know, uh, but you know, communication go both ways. You know, the person got to talk and the person got to be able to hear it. So you got to be loud, you know, and vocal so the person can hear it. So uh, it's all about just, you know, just being loud and vocal, I would say. You know, you got to, everybody got to hear you in the gym, even the coaches off the bench. You know, that that's, if I can hear that on the bench, then you can hear it on the court. So I figured if, you, if just being loud and vocal. We'll go to Zoom. Yep. Quentin. It's good, KCP. Uh, we talked to Coach, and he said that, um, excuse me if I missed this question, but he said that you guys talked about that Houston Rockets game. Uh, what were your impressions of the team just watching from afar um, when you watched that preseason game, their opener? Um, it was, I mean, I, our team is good. You know, we, we competed the whole game. Uh, a lot of mistakes that I've seen um, that I, I want to just, you know, that we discuss as, as far as defense, uh, offense is going to come. Uh, I'm more, more focused on the defensive end. Um, and it's a lot of things that we can simplify and that we can make easy for us. And what have you seen that you like so far from Spencer at that point guard position playing alongside him and also how he sees the court? Um, I mean, I've been knowing Spencer for a little minute. You know, I had him in Detroit. I mean, I didn't get a chance to play with him um, as much in Detroit. Uh, but just, you know, get the opportunity here. It's going to be good. You know, kind of know, I already know what he what he can do. You know, he's a scorer. Uh, and he can, he, he'll play maker. Uh, and I, know, I already know that. Uh, it's all about just seeing him out there, you know, just getting it done. Appreciate you. Neil. Hey, KCP, when you're watching that film and, you know, you have your own thoughts on, you know, how to improve things, is that something you bring up with coach individually, bring up in a group session, a mix of both? Um, just uh, individually, I would say. Uh, right now, uh, I'm still trying to learn, you know, what he wants to do on, on defense. Uh, I don't want to just take away from that. Um, so I'm still learning the bases as well. So, uh when I see fit, I feel like I, I throw my two cents in there, uh, and you know we go through, we go from there. We have that dialogue, you know, which I enjoy, um, and it just it's good to have that dialogue between the, you know, the coaches and players. You know, him listening to us, and, and you know we definitely got to listen to him. So cool, thanks, Christos. Hey, KCP, hope you're doing well. How good is your fit with the team so far in the first days of preparation? And how you vision your role on the floor? 
this season? Um, I feel like I fit well, uh, well with this, this this group, you know, and you know anybody that's going to be on the floor, uh, you know, I run it, I run the floor in transition. You know, I'm gonna defend. Um, I feel like that that fits in in in, in any system. Uh, but you know, uh, just knowing these guys, you know, like for the last, you know, however long it has been, you know, it, I, I feel comfortable. You know, I feel like I've known him for it as, as a year or two, you know, um, already. Um, and it, it's just been it's been fun just being around him and it's just building that chemistry. You know, we getting to know each other and that, that, that makes it easier. Can you understand that you are tracking to play tomorrow? Your first would be your first game in like six months. So just kind of like what are your thoughts, your emotions going into that? Uh, wow, it's been a long time. It's been a long time uh, since April. I think I got injured. Uh, it was it was a it was a pretty um, tough ride for me in the beginning. Um, all the preparation, rehabbing, um, wasn't easy. But I, I promised myself that I'll come back stronger. I'll come back better, uh, more experienced. And basically, I feel like I'm ready. I've been uh, practicing with the whole team, uh, two practices now. I feel good. Uh, all the coaches uh, have my back. Coach have my back. Players got my back. So I'm excited to go out there uh, on the court. I saw them in Houston. I saw how we shared in the ball. I saw the, our game style. I'm very excited this season. And it uh, feels good. And I understand you were uh, kind of having to change positions on the fly during the point scrimmage today. Uh, coach called it a kind of like hot quiz for you. Uh, what was that like from your perspective? I feel like uh, something that um, I really uh, like about my game is that I can play multiple positions. So whether it's you need me in that position at a certain point, or you need me to guard this player at a certain point, you need me to guard this center at a certain point, I feel, or, or run the offense or be the four guy who pops out. I feel like I can really be versatile and help the team in the position that they need in that point. And that's very important for me and for the team. And I feel like i um, comfortable almost everywhere. And whatever I got a chance to do, I'll do it 100%. And that's about it. And um, yesterday I saw you doing uh, some shooting drills with Davis, um, kind of running around cones. That, what's it like being in a shooting drill with him? And, and is the competitor within you kind of want to keep up or beat him and that sort of stuff? Me, me and Davis have a fun relationship uh, in, in terms of, like, uh, shooting. Uh, we both came from Europe. We both uh, know our similar coaches and how tough they were on us on a young age. And, and me and Davis always talking, talking shit to each other. So it, feel, it feels good uh, shooting with him. He pushes me. He pushes me. It's, it's not easy to shoot with a guy like uh, Davis, uh, you know, one of the best shooters in the league. And uh, I challenge myself. I like it. I like it, and it makes me better. So, shout out to him. Yes, he's not bad. I'll give him that. He's not bad. Um, ben, I'm sure we asked you some kind of warm-up this question on media day, but you came into the league last year like very comfortable, very confident. Kind of Where have you grown? I guess how much more comfortable and confident do you feel entering the year two? Like I'm sure there was just so much stuff thrown at you last year. Is it weird here anyway? What do you feel now? I feel like I'm part of the team more, kind of, if it makes sense in any way. I feel like I'm sort of getting treated like I'm young, which is good, which I like, and people want to push me and get me better. But it's not in that rookie scale anymore. They see you as, like, somebody you can they can count on somebody that is like part of of all like the games and, and and defense and offense and all over the court and just more confidence you know what's the nba all about you know the players it's it's not it's not it's not like a shock for you anymore like oh damn i'm in the nba like i i, I know i'm in the nba and i respect it and i love it and i love to be here with the guys every day but it's more like all right i've been through it first year now I need to focus on the things that I need to improve, whether it's my game, 
whether it's the communication on the court, whether it's defense, the, the small things. It's not like getting in rhythm right now. It's more like doing small adjustments you need to do before every game, before every team you play. So it feels good. You feel like you have a strong base coming in year two. You still need to improve a lot of things. You still need to get better. And I'm not um, coming here and say that my second year will be perfect, but hopefully it will be better. And I'm just feeling more mature and more ready. So. You said, obviously, that you might have obvious answers to this question, but what about the beginning period after getting injured was so tough for you? Is it just like uncertainty? You never have any floor or something like that? So that is the first time since I was 14 that I missed that amount of games. Oh, like imagine like I did the youth programs and then I had national team, youth programs, national team, always had that um, season national team. So I didn't really have that much time off basketball. And when you get that time uh, out of basketball, it makes you think about a lot of things. Um, and it gave me a lot of motivation to rehab and come back is, 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 is like better than ever and faster. Like the fastest I can be on the court in shape, it was very, very important for me and my, my guys around me uh, that I'll come ready for training camp. And here we are, we made it. And I'm just, I'm happy to be here, honestly. Hey, Danny, I know you addressed this a little bit on media day, but um, what's the biggest thing you learned from Russell Westbrook? You think? From Russ, you can learn a lot. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a complicated question. Um, first of all, Hall of Famer. You can't really, you can't really have any, any other words for him. I mean, Hall of Famer has been a lot, a, lot of, a lot of years in the league, and he knows what he's doing. I see how he prepares for games. I see how he treats his body. It's not like you take it for granted that this, this guy is going on the court every day and give 100% every game. It not, it's not something you see often and, and, I, and you respect it as a player because it's not easy, especially in that age. And he's, I mean, he's still going. So if there's somebody that you need to listen to about how to prepare and how to take care of your body and how to come with the right mindset each and every night, I never seen such a thing. So it was, it was really, it was really nice to see from the side how he treats basketball and how he loves basketball. And he made, he made me also tougher, 100%. He made me tougher. Um, he made me to take the game serious every day and come and take care of your body and know when you need to rest and when you need to work hard and when you need like um, um, to prepare for the game. And yeah. I mean, I can I can add a hundred more stories to it, but it's basically the main things that I have learned. Because he was pretty tough on you, right? But you knew that it yeah. was for your good. But yeah, he, he was really tough on me, but at the beginning, you know, you always like, ah damn, and you all you always like kind of like down after. But at a certain point, you you understand that he wants the best out of you. You know, he wants you like to be every day next to him, um, helping to win, be a part of the team. So at one point I just got in the rhythm of like, okay, I understand what he wants now. Like, I, I understand when he comes to me, I, I know, I got you. Like, I know what you mean, I know what you, so you just, I just went with it and yeah, it made me tough through the, through the year, but um, even I felt really good towards the end of the year, but I got injured. Uh, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a pleasure and honor and I'm thankful. Tommy had just mentioned early on that, you know, things weren't progressing necessarily as they would have hoped them to be. Yeah. Um, listen, when I got injured, the predictions were probably two to three months, more, more so like probably 10 weeks. And when I look back at it, it's been six months. So it was not in plan to be out for so long, but I mean, I just had it keep going. I had to deal with it. I know my body didn't repair itself like everybody thought it would. Um, but hey, I got more time to work on my game, more time to get stronger, more time in the weight room. 
it didn't stop me from from getting up every morning and just work. So, um, you know, we weren't in season. So for me, a month, in, like a month uh, extra or not, it didn't really matter at that point, you know. You know, obviously all of your previous coaches, I've already said you're a very hard worker, you know, very diligent. Yes. Mm -hmm. How has that helped you during this rehab process to get back to, you know, hopefully 100% where you are today? I mean, whether I got injured or not, I think that um, I'm a hard worker and you said uh, you said it uh, by yourself and I think it didn't really matter. I mean, I just instead of working on the court, I worked outside the court, whether it's weight room or 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 rehabbing or, or doing stuff that really helps me um, rehab back on the floor. But the only thing that I couldn't do is being on the court, you know, so. For me, it was the same. Even, even if I didn't get injured, I will still work hard, no matter if I got injured, if it, if it makes sense. I, I got a little bit complicated, but um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work hard no matter what, even if I got injured or not. Um, of course, it helped me and pushed me and gave me a lot of motivation to come back. So um, that's all I have to say. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Quentin. Good, big dog. What's up? Uh, can, What's up you can you talk to us about just the energy and practice right now? I mean, you were practicing off to the side, but now you are all the way immersed in five on five. Just tell us about the energy so far with the squad. Energy being great. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a different vibe. I feel it. I felt it from the first day. Um, the group of guys we got, the coaches we have around, it, it's, it's a great atmosphere. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying coming every day and, and, and work. And even you see things like like the football, the football we played before the practice. It, it shows you a lot on like, we just want to have fun. We're having fun. Um, we take our job serious, but we know that we need to be together and have fun sometimes and laugh together sometimes. And, and, and those things are small, but it helps. It helps in team chemistry. It helps on the court. So things like that makes um, the environment um, uh, way better and much more fun and, you know, better to, to work and get better. So you had a really big thing happen to you uh, this week uh, with the uh, champions breakfast. You're uh, the face <laughs> of that box now. Can you just talk about the uh, what that means to you growing up as well as how that's, you know, that's something that you grew up on. Just kind of how do you feel now that you've accomplished that? So growing up, for the guys who don't know, I used to uh, grow up eating this cereal. Um, so it's kind of like, um, how you say, close, like closed circle for me. Full circle. That I come as an athlete and replace Omri. Um, he's been there for, for almost uh, 10 years, 11 years since I was little. Uh, and coming to, to, to this spot, and it, it's really an honor, like, I mean, I've worked all my life hard and I never really thought I, I'll see my face one day on, on the cereal box. Uh, is it is it funny? It might seem, but I mean, I grew up on it and it's just, I just enjoy, enjoy watching it um, on the shelves and then kids um, taking pictures and sending it to me and like, it means a lot for me, so.